to the Insomniac Show with Nicolette and Brian. We'll get real deep with you. Educating, inspiring, and solving problems with some of the most inspirational humans on the planet. Buckle up and hey, come on the journey. Mm-hmm. I'm excited. All right, guys, I'm Nicolette, and today Brian and I are here with exercise physiologist Fung Tran, and she's going to talk to us today a little bit about um, the social media age and uh, what we're seeing on the internet versus what's really, what people really look like. <laughs> so thank you so much for joining us today. We really appreciate your time. Oh, thank you both. So, so tell us a little bit about your journey to exercise physiology. How, how did this happen for you? And I mean, it's all started in probably high school, you know, when, you know, you were going through puberty and then I myself ballooned up and then I felt bad about myself, you know, just constantly, you know, looking at myself and, you know, my peers at school. And so obviously like every other young person, I would go on the internet to find out how to fix it. And so, um, you know, I would go on Google, see a bunch of random tips that like, doesn't really work for myself like or Mm -hmm. it's like pictures of models that you know look very good so at that time it was um I think it was the thinny skinny um type that was going on and now it's probably like the opposite it's a curvy type but it was (laughs) thinny back then and I was like well I needed that and the thing is that I found that the tips are pretty unhelpful in a way. And, you know, that's pretty extreme. Like for me, if like you pronounce my name, you know that I'm Asian. And so one of the tips that I remember the most is like, you shouldn't be eating rice because if, if you eat rice, you cannot be living healthy. And I'm like, that's not possible. You know, like for me, like I was a kid too. So like, I can't just go to my mom and be like, oh, you know what? I'm going to eat salads from now on and, and watch her go. You know, like that wouldn't happen. And so I'm like, oh, wow. So it's, it didn't work. None of it worked. And so I'm like, okay, when I go to college, I'm like, let's do something about this thing. And, um, you know, looked around, got some counselors and they just like, oh, we have a thing called exercise science at this school. And then like, oh, amazing. So I know how to exercise, how to eat, how to work out and all that stuff. And it just basically, you know, provide that knowledge to change, you know, my routine. Cause like, oh, wow. It's not only just about, you know, what moves you should be having, but it's, you know, about the anatomy, the physiology of things that's happening when you go from like not working out to like going out for a bit or like even more like what's happening and also how to make yourself working out because there's some psychology behind it and you know it's easier to make like the process to understand the process so that you can slowly integrate exercise into your life like normal and then how to eat right you know just basic nutrition and um so yeah so i you know i got it like i lost 25 pounds (laughs) in two years it's not like, oh, you know, like, it's not right. crazy. Like, it's because right. I was, you know, testing out the theories and seeing how it works. But yeah, I got there. And, you know, I sustained the, the change. Like, I haven't gained back the weight. Right. I think that's the biggest uh, thing. Like, a lot of people, you know, would say, oh, we can lose double digit in 30 days. And within another 30 days, you're going to gain back all the stuff that you <laughs> lost. And so, like, okay. And, you know, I help out a bunch of friends. And now you know, with the pandemic happening and people were just struggling how to work out, you know, like, cause you cannot go to the gym. I mean, maybe now you can, but like before you couldn't uh-huh. and, right. or they were just looking to like balance their life from like studying, working from home to, you know, working out all that stuff. Mm-hmm. So I'm like, let's just start like an Instagram account so that I can like debunking myths about stuff, looking about, you know, body images, mm-hmm. like show them that, you know, like they look beautiful. They just, you know, maybe uh, work a little bit more to get to the healthy point. Right. So, okay. So what's the most bizarre thing you've actually seen someone say they could do to lose weight or get fit? That's just like out, totally out of, out of the, you know, out, crazy. Cra- the craziest thing is probably, um, uh, you know, just drinking smoothies. <laughs> like smoothie like, drink. Calories are calories. I hate to tell you whether you're drinking them or eating them. <laughs> yeah. You know? and, yeah. They would, or one other thing is like, you should, um, you shouldn't be eating uh, fruits after a meal 
because of volatile of vitamins. And I'm like, <laughs> if vitamins are that volatile, there's gonna be volatile all the time. Like how, how is this gonna be like just after you eating a meal? It's before the meal is gonna be bad. During the meal is gonna be bad. Even after, so like, I don't even get those things. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you mentioned the psychology, right? So how, I mean, how much does psychology, obviously, you know, motivation wise, how much does psychology really, you know, play a role in exercise and fitness and, and how you can actually achieve, you know, how, how, how much weight does it really hold? It's probably um, quite a lot in my case and a lot of my clients case, because we're uh, primarily women. And so we're motivate, you know, like at the beginning, of course, by, you know, how society looks at us, how we perceive ourselves, like just basically our image, our body image. And so working like with my clients, I would work with their um, psychology first and then how they perceive themselves, like how, you know, is your motivation inside, like coming from inside of you that you want to look better or is it from outside that you're afraid that people are looking at you and you don't look good enough? Right. And so psychology is a huge part for, uh, yeah, for us. <laughs> Do you think, I'm, I'm sorry, how does that determine your path then? Like, let's say it's internal versus, let's say it's me, I want to change on the inside versus, you know, afraid of external. Like, how does that change your path when you work with clients? Uh, because if you're like coming from inside of you, you're more able to gonna be keep doing and sustaining it because you are like you know you are the only constant part you're the only person who can control yourself so right. if it's coming from within you're like okay i've been working out but i like it because of this because of this like for me it goes from like you know my body image to my health and now just because i liked it i just you know like one of those crazy people who just like do random <laughs> things and i love it i don't need any other people to be looking at me and start like, oh, wow, you know, com even complimenting like, wow, Fong, you're working out a lot. Like, I don't need any of that. I just go because it's for me. Like, that selfish person. Like, I just love it. I don't care about what you think. Uh, do you think Do you think a lot of people, because I, I say this all the time, right? There is, like, just going to the gym and working out, like, lifting weights, like, this is not functional strength, right? It may make you look good. It's sort of like, almost like plastic surgery. Like, it makes you, <laughs> right? It makes you look good. But, like, functional strength, right, mm -hmm. is a very different thing than, you know, cosmetic looking, like, I'm a bodybuilder, you mm -hmm. know? And how important is... You know, because do you, do you feel a lot of people, because you talk about from the, you know, social aspect, most of those people I think are looking at the cosmetic aspect versus the functional aspect. Because if you look at certain athletes, they're not like super cut or they're not like super, but they're in very good condition, you know, and they do triathlons and this and that, but they don't look like a whole lot if you look, you judge them from a physical and do sometimes we have the wrong perspective on physically what it looks like versus healthy what it looks like. That's definitely because in fitness, we have actually two, two different types of strength training. And one is like just pure strength training for, you know, looks, but there's also what's called conditioning. Mm -hmm. And usually I would, you know, just merge people into conditioning because obviously you're still doing similar things like the strength right. people, just the difference are very minute, like subtle. Mm -hmm. And then, but the end result is, you know, you're getting stronger where you need to. And then right. the balance, like you don't have, you know, like huge chest and like, right. skinny, like skinny legs. My <laughs> husband was just looking at someone on the corner the other day. He's like, look at that guy. He's like, you know, he's maybe on some steroids. I don't know. And he's really big. He's like, look at his legs. His yeah. legs were smaller than mine. They were thinner. They were like too yeah. thick. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, the the, the, the don't skip legs as it's coming around. Yeah, it's very yeah. Hard. Your 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 calves should not be skinnier than your forearms. I mean, that's just uh, <laughs> so pretty tiny. straight, a pretty straight concept, right? Yeah. yeah. And I mean, even when you look at magazines or online, you know, people are training to look that way. I mean, I remember just the latest interview between Anthony uh, Mackie and you know Trevor Noah about him. Like he took four months to get in shape for that role. Right. <laughs> And he doesn't look that way all year round. And mm -hmm. the problem is we, we as normal people, we're like, oh, we got to look like that 12 right. months of the yeah. week. And that's, that's actually a good point too, because you look at athletes too, and you look at, you know, I mean, you know, you look at athletes, let's just take fighters, for instance, they're like walking around like 30 pounds heavier, you know, than when they actually train for a fight for three months and they're shedding like sometimes whatever that massive amount of weight and they look jacked. 
But when they're off, you know, when they're not training and they're, you know, walking around their normal street weight, which is, you know, maybe 30 pounds heavier if they're a 200 and something pound athlete, you know? So, yeah. So our bodies are like cars. You cannot just like run at top speed right. <laughs> every single time. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. <laughs> and that's where I think to your point where the, the mental piece doing it from within becomes the thing because wanting to do it or having some goal, even, you know, to focus on plays so much into wanting to get up and go and work out or, you know, run or whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. Now, how would you say, I mean, I believe social media is just so destructive for many reasons, but I, I think, you know, especially when it comes to comparing and, and in this sense, the physical, you know, um, you know, what do you think that's done to self-confidence to, com you know, confidence and body image, you know, over the past it's six years? Pretty negative, I would say. Like, I would, you know, for myself, I have an example. Like, I recently got, like, one of my IG reels to go viral, like, you know, it's mm -hmm. got like 600 hundred likes. Like, I usually got 30. <laughs> so, and one of the first comments was like, well, the thing is like, that's the reels of me posting, like, you know, with a background to say how to look sexy. And there's the mm -hmm. model and there's me doing the same thing. And obviously mm -hmm. I didn't look <laughs> as gorgeous as she did. <laughs> and, you know, one of the first comments was like, start hitting the gym and just change your hairstyle. Like one of the first comments, I'm like, I, if you know me, like I look fine. Like I have a naturally <laughs> brown face. <laughs> that's yeah. it. But, I, I know you know, the that's why I'm at an angle. No, I'm yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I'm like, wow, even for me, like, what if that happened to a young girl who just like mm -hmm. do random things and, you know, one of her things just got exploded and people said that to her. Or even one of my first exercises with my clients actually would tell them to go on Instagram and then find pictures of people mm -hmm. that they want to look like. And then we'll just look at the background, <laughs> we'll look at the mm -hmm. lightning and see if they manipulate it. And usually right. like nine times out of 10, they did. Right. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know how, like when you go on a site and it says like, you know, there's an ad that says advertisement, like we need to start doing that on social media, like filtered, you know, like if yeah. it goes <laughs> filtered, like add, add a little caveat there and let people yeah. know. Because oh, it's a great idea, Brian. It's right? crazy. <laughs> it's great, you know, especially right. the one especially the ones did you ever see like there's one where was it joe rogan and he used so many filters and he turned himself into a, like a girl you know what i mean it's like it's like so bizarre what you could do with filtering these days you know yeah. you have a 50 year old ball guy turning himself into a female you know it's it's crazy uh -huh. you know? yeah it's a and we have that too on stories so like instagram stories it shows you that but not the post Right. Also, I feel like that's the, you know, the thing right. you just need to yeah. add in. Or even people just have their own apps. There are different apps that you can go in and change oh how you look. Yeah, like, the, look shape. like yeah. it's insane. Yeah. But like, it would change the background. And so a lot of people, you know, you would have like, just this blank background, or you can see like the tiles is curvy or the same. <laughs> it's so funny to look at. Yeah. Yeah. Bad so photos. Of... <laughs> Sorry, Brian. No, I was just saying bad Photoshop. <laughs> <laughs> so how much of what we're seeing from influencers is really Photoshop then? Like are who who's real out there then in the social media realm? I don't think a lot. I mean, <laughs> I don't know if you remember the scandal with, you know, the Kim K family about um, you know, there's that paparazzi that took pictures, you know, like candid photos with that Photoshop, and then she <laughs> looks like us, you know, with a bit of a belly, <laughs> you know, like some rolls there and it it's become like a problem because the you know the family went after that photographer <laughs> and be like we gotta sue you for you know this and um it blew up and people like oh she looks like us she doesn't have this and that and mm -hmm. then one of the other sisters just like well just come on IG live and be like you know this is how we normally look and literally during the live her uh filters like just scratch like this like this moment of like this thing and this it just <laughs> happened like this <laughs> so a lot of people use filters mm -hmm. it's just um you know how much they're using like for me right. i just use it to like for my skin you know when you look took selfie it's a bit of that complexion i'm like oh i don't like it so you do a bit of that but i like maybe you go a bit further and then you download right. those apps like visco mm -hmm. girl or whatever and then start like okay i need a thinner face yeah. i need smoother like right. wider skin whatever <laughs> Right. I, yeah. I mean, and that's a good point when you start, you know, when you do, you start doing 
digital body modification, yeah. right? That is totally, totally unrealistic, right? In some yes. cases. So for, for not even that, just not even normal people, even them, you know, it's unrealistic, right? Yeah. You know? Mm -hmm. And it's bad for everyone because now we're comparing ourselves to like the impossible because they mm -hmm. don't even look like that. Right. Right. And how could you even get close? And, you know, and I'm sure like, you know, you pointed this out earlier, you know, for, for, especially for younger people, you know, that could be really tough, you know, if you just don't have genetics or you maybe don't have access to gyms or things like that, or, you know, wh whatever the case is. So, you know, that's, that, that could be really rough on younger people seeing these things. Yeah. So then, Fung, how do you work with your clients? You know, what are some of the, the things that you'll do? You mentioned the initial psychology part. You know, what comes next? What are, what are some of the things that you do to help people become more active and, and physically? So um, we'll just talk about, you know, different uh, physical activities. So, like, not exactly exercises that they, they can do. Like, you know, just adding the little things. Because I believe in making things easier so that you can do it. It's mm -hmm. like... For me, like exercising is sort of like playing a video games. Mm -hmm. You go from level zero and then you maybe go to level one and then you just keep leveling up. And, you know, we're just starting out with small little things that they can add into their life. And so we're talking about maybe like just standing up every hour of you working, like sitting down because obviously most of us still working from home. And so just standing up every hour. Do that first for like a week and then we'll start like, okay, let's walking around the neighborhood, see how you like it. If you have a dog with you, you better be walking that thing too with you. Like just right. take the two of you, go out. Right. And then you just slowly include like, so now how do you go to the gym? What sort of like, or working at home. So I'll have like an app and it, it has video in it so that you can see how, how to work out. Mm -hmm. And then you can start working out from there, like working out from home. What can you do small, like body weight workout? What can you do starting out? And then you slowly graduate to like go to the gym if you want to, obviously. But most of my like just ended up loving the gym for some reason. And I'm like, okay, let's go to the gym. These are the machines. And then he, I think one of them start going to a kickboxing class mm -hmm. that she takes twice a day. <laughs> Oh my god! Two her. sessions good. today. I'm like, okay, you're no, that's a, that, I'm not doing that. You, you take it to a whole good. new level now. I'm like, good for you, but this girl ain't going out with you either. <laughs> yeah. So, so it's oh, a slowly graduation of adding mm -hmm. things, and obviously we work with also um you know your psychology a bit of that also you know diet like how to. So instead of like having to like, oh, you have to eliminate this, like even if it's Oreos, you know, things that you already know that's bad for you, because I mean, she come to me and be like, oh, I know I need to put this away. And I'm like, no, because you're, you can, you know, stop drinking ginger ale now, but you're going to start drinking after we're done with our program. So instead you can just slowly decrease the amount of ginger ale that you're drinking. So maybe instead of a whole can for yourself, split it up with somebody else, you know? Mm -hmm. So slowly. we got to do something about my ice cream then, because I mean, that's a problem. <laughs> I'm tired, but it's a, it's a problem. It's a sickness. I mean, yeah, you slowly, I mean, I have a that's right. One spoon a day, Nicolette. Yeah, one spoon, one spoon a day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there are days where I do that. I, you know, I just, you know, and the crazy part is, and, and here's the psychology, right? Because um, there are days where I'm thinking all day long, um, you know, I'm so looking forward to, um, you know, watching, I don't know, whatever. This is us, right? So I want to watch This Is Us tonight. And I'm looking forward to it, but in my mind, I have to have my ice cream with it right because well, you, you know like that, that. you conditioned yourself that's yeah. that can be the experience now how do i sit down and watch this without my ice cream it's like i can't do it so what i did um i'm sorry I'm, I'm just going on a tangent but so when i was um when i was pregnant i gained 65 pounds and then i actually ended up losing so much weight that i was i weighed less than i did before i got pregnant back before not now anymore but th at that time and so what i did was i swapped it out for yogurt right so mm -hmm. i had this yo so i swapped it so i was like all right i'll sit down and i'll eat the yogurt while i watch the tv and it was you know it did the trick but it wasn't great ice cream now <laughs> i just eat ice cream all day long and i still think you know and i still think right. about it all day You're think i'm thinking about it now it's 11 22 and i'm already thinking about rewarding myself with ice cream tonight well, I have a question. Isn't ice cream and yogurt roughly the same calorie count in most okay. cases? Like, <laughs> That's what I'm yeah. <laughs> like, you know, not really doing anything. Yeah, like just coffee. <laughs> well, but you know, I mean, like, there's a 
and the ice cream, I'll eat a lot of it. And the mm, yogurt, okay. I wouldn't. I would just have the cup of yogurt, you know, okay. and the ice cream. Right. Would fair, fair enough, fair enough. So, yeah, you like Brian said, you condition yourself, like positive mm-hmm. conditioning yourself to reward mm-hmm. yourself with that. Mm-hmm. But you can think, like, what other um, ways you can... I mean, you don't have to, do you have to eat the whole ice cream by yourself or are you watching, you know, your show with somebody else? Well, I am, my son is now, I've put him on to ice cream. He does like ice cream now as well. And now, I'm like, is it ice cream time? I'm like, yes, it's ice so, cream So, I mean, one of the first things is like buying the smaller portion, like, you know, the single mm-hmm. size uh-huh. things. And then you two can split it up. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You Maybe. know, mother and son bonding yeah. time is still yeah. ice cream. Okay. And then okay. you can fight over that. Okay. <laughs> instead this, of watching screen, the show. Uh, <laughs> So this brings up a question I wanted to ask when you're talking about people and walking their dogs even, right? A lot mm-hmm. of times when you see out of shape people, usually their dogs are out of shape too, right? Okay, <laughs> let's let's be honest. Their dogs are like little sausages. They're not like dog shaped anymore. You know, they're like a sausage <laughs> with four legs. But here's the thing. Now, back to, sort of back to Nicolette's point. Now she's conditioning her son and not that they're out of shape. So yeah. I'm not implying that. But what happens is if you're not leading a healthy lifestyle, whether it's eating or whether it's getting exercise how do you pass it on whether it's to your dog or to your children right or to the people around you mm-hmm. you know so if if someone's not starting it you pass on sort of that bad conditioning piece right mm-hmm. yeah so i mean it's a journey you can take together it's because it's much easier when you have another friend to be like your accountability well right. yeah but maybe your dog like when it's, you know, like, cause they like to walk around too. Like you get that activity, you know, that's their, they're more, you know, <clears throat> the animal instinct sort of kicked in a bit faster than us. <laughs> and so they would remind you to go on a walk. <laughs> and so yeah. you have that accountability or, you know, your son, like, you know, kids are very like innocent. They'll be asking a lot of questions and mm-hmm. then they'll start asking you like just unexpected questions that make you like, just reflect back and be like, oh crap, <laughs> what's what's this? <laughs> you know, what have I been doing? And so having, that's why I encourage having like, you know, like friends, you know, some, like children or even pets, because they're going to start reminding you, like I have a cat and it would wake me up early just to eat. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. That's, so even if you that. don't have friends, if your dog looks <laughs> like a sausage, you need to go for more walks. <laughs> 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 but the psychology is, is easier when you have a companion. Yeah. So just make, yeah. you know, maybe make your son your companion and you two can go on that journey together. Yeah, we got to, we got to cut down on the ice cream love, huh? I, you know, and it's, it, you, you mentioned, you mentioned your, your ethnicity, right? So I'm Italian and we show love with food, you know, and so there's a serious psychological, um, a, you know, thing going on with food, mm-hmm. especially in this, you know, family, we are just big, like food is what you do mm-hmm. for anything, you know, someone's born, someone dies, someone, it just doesn't matter. You just, you know, you bring food, you eat food, you cook mm-hmm. food and it's food, food, food. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's a very big part of, of life. And, and I can see where, you know, um, having a, a husband who's Irish, who doesn't eat anything, um, and sorry, Irish people, but he doesn't eat anything, right? Um, you know, it's, it's difficult because I, I, everything is like a big, um, you know, event around dinner or a meal, and he could just eat a quick salad and call it a day. There's no wow. psychological attachment there, you know, and that's what I've seen him have so much success in eating healthy because he's not psychologically attached to pasta or whatever, you know, have, having meals and making a big meal on a Sunday. It's like, mm-hmm. I eat to nourish myself and that's mm-hmm. about it, you know? Mm-hmm. I mean, so I can see, you know, I really, really agree with that psychology aspect. Well, I think, you know, you, it's the way you're viewing food, right? So you're viewing food as comfort versus most people, because I'm the same way. I view food as just energy, right? It's right. energy. So I need to feed my body whatever fuel it is you know, and hopefully it's the healthy type of fuel, but whatever fuel it is to actually do what it needs to do versus going, oh, you know, and don't get me wrong, we all indulge sometimes, you know, but, you know, it's it's fuel. That's, I think, what you need to think about. And if you put a whole bunch of crappy fuel in your car, it's going to quickly become pretty crappy, right? Versus yeah. if you're using good fuel, it's going to it's gonna run much better. Yeah, definitely. And the thing is, like, you don't even have to feel bad about, you know, like, like what your husband eats versus what you eat. Maybe you can experiment with, you know, like alternatives, replacement, right. and, you know, make, cause I've, I've found that making your own food is like the easiest way. Cause you can control like, you know, the recipe would say add 
two tablespoons of sugar and you just went I just want one because right. that's that's what I'm doing it's my you know it's my kitchen right <laughs> and so making your own food and then experimenting with uh stuff like you know maybe not uh old cheese maybe we have vegan cheese or you know just trying out with less cheese all this stuff that you can make and then you would eventually because you're you know because you're bonding still like you still can keeping that culture with you which is mm -hmm. about food but now you're investing time instead of just eating you're investing time cooking as well and so now you're having like more more of that you're not losing out anything you're just changing how you invest your time and you know energy into which part of the meal so how how important is sort of calorie counting versus healthy eating i don't do ca calorie countings it's you too much healthy? no it's maybe like when i'm cutting uh -huh. then i would but usually i don't because um like I've conditioned myself to eat like to a healthy point that my weight right. stay the same. Even right. if I'm eating ice cream, like maybe it's like, because I mean, look, if you, your weight changes within eight pounds, that's just water and you can lose that eight pounds in a week. So it's just, the fluctuation is very yeah. big on the scale. <laughs> like, you know, oh, I lost eight pounds. That's amazing. But actually just water, like you do that in a week or two. And so literally, um, I don't mind about those, you know, I don't, like, I wait myself every day, but I don't mind the changes. Mm -hmm. Like, the smaller thing, because if I have family over, obviously, I'm going to have to indulge myself, mm -hmm. like, you know, that's yeah. our culture. Right. But I, we don't have family over, like, all days, every day. <laughs> <laughs> so there are downtime that, you know, I have my normal life, where I live my normal life. <laughs> then I'm like, okay, maybe wash what I eat a little bit more, you know, like, cooking for my own self, mm -hmm. seeing how things go, putting, like, what I'm putting in my body, I'll be more conscious about what I'm eating. But right. I don't really, like, just, like, weigh everything out and then counting right. them. It's too so, much. So so when you do have those events, right, if you are trying to be healthy or lose weight and you do have those family events where you n maybe you just can't eat as healthy, is it really dealing with like portion control and just not overloading your plate with food, you know, and really going like, how do you handle that situation? Or you just go, you know what, today it's one of my cheap meals because I do that sometimes. It's like a cheap meal and I'm just going to eat whatever I want, you know? Yeah. I mean, for me, I would like eat a little bit, you know, the healthy food I have at home beforehand and then I'll go to the dinner. <laughs> So I'm already sort of full, like, I'm like halfway there, and then I don't need to indulge as much. I'm still there, you know, talking with people, right. still eating their food, but my body's just naturally said, like, we're sort of full, so you can't eat as much. And so I, I ended up not overeating or what, like, I can control myself because, and then I eat slowly, the point of, like, me hanging out with my family, so like, we talk, and so I eat very slow. And that works with your body as well, because there's a delay between your stomach and your brain of like your stomach tell the brain how, when it's full. And if you're eating too fast, your stomach doesn't have the time to tell your brain that, okay, I'm full. And maybe you feel worse afterwards. So if right. you eat slow and spend time with your family talking, suddenly your, your stomach like, okay, we've got time and just tell your brain. And then you just naturally stop yourself from eating. Like, yes. So at the end of the party, when they turn on the light, you're still on your, like your appetizer, you know? <laughs> <laughs> okay. I have a question, a weird question. Have you ever heard of someone have like fear of missing out of food, like food FOMO? Like, because I, I'm going to sound strange, but so like if there are cannolis or certain desserts, like maybe I don't even want one, mm -hmm. but I'm like, when's the next time I'm going to have one? You know, like mm -hmm. if I don't eat it now, I got to wait till the next part. Like, I feel like I'm, I have to eat it because I'm afraid I'm not going to, like, I'm going to miss it. Mm -hmm. Like, how crazy is that? I have food FOMO. What is that? Yeah, I mean, it's my first time hearing it. So. Okay, so. <laughs> I think you probably everyone listening, so there, there we go. I swear, there will be someone listening that has food FOMO too. But I definitely had that feeling, you know, a couple of times, and it's just, um, I'm like, maybe I'm just going to go buy it somewhere else and find mm -hmm. friends to, like, have it. Like, for me, I, I just think like that. Maybe it takes me a while to look at the food and just went, Oh, maybe it's trash. I don't know what these people are cooking. I'm not, I don't trust them. It's not my cooking. <laughs> like even, you know, with apple pies, like we, we tried, like we would eat apple pies and I'm like, I'm not buying the store bought one. I'm just going to make my own because all these are trash and then I don't miss anything. <laughs> right. Yeah. Okay, I, so I mean, like incorporating it's not like, it's not like you're at the supermarket. You're at the supermarket. If you want a cannoli, you just buy the cannoli. <laughs> like, no, but 
like, how often do you go get a cannoli? I just, you know, I just, I'm like, oh my God, there's a whole box. I got to eat one. I have to eat one or else they're all going to be gone, you know? Well, is it because they're all going to be gone or because you don't know when you're going to see one? Now you said two different things. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) I'm going to get this cannoli before Aunt Susie eats all the cannoli. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, no, if you eat slow and then you gotta have time. I mean, dessert. You gotta always. You're always gonna have space for dessert, though, right? Yeah. But <laughs> so I, that's I, one of those times where you just like let it go and not yeah. be too stressed on yourself. Or, or, like make because the thing is like you don't make it a negative experience. You gotta oh. put the cannoli in your purse, Nicola, and take it home with you. Yeah, at <laughs> home, right? TV show. You just have a two-go thing. That's you, right. You, you bring know, your own two-go box to the party. Know something though, I don't bring anything. I don't bring um, like once I'm done with a party, right? And I've now just stuffed myself full, and I'm in a food coma, and. You know, I, I, I walk out and like, that's it. I will not take home the sweets oh. or the, you know, like I, 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 I indulge a lot. I'll eat enough for about five people. But then when I get <laughs> home, that, that's about it. Like I'm not taking that stuff home with me to eat it at home now. I, you know, like, I'll do it there and then that's it. You know? I don't know. I think if you took the cannoli, you would, you would not have yeah. the. <laughs> Maybe just start bringing in like your two little boxes. I, I do that all the times with dessert. Cause I'm like, I just have like a little cup and then just like spoon some. And then I'm like, okay, that's it. I have some, but not a whole lot. Well, that's like to your son, open your pocket. I'm going to put this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you don't miss out anything. <laughs> We'll eat it with the ice cream later. <laughs> the ice cream. It has like lint on it from being in your pocket. You know? <laughs> and then be like, oh, wow, now it's, it's trash now. So we got to throw it away. <laughs> yeah, uh, I am probably uh, probably the craziest person you've uh, <laughs> had to deal with in terms of food psychology. <laughs> oh, really? I've got serious issues. <laughs> well, Oh my goodness. All right. So tell us your best advice for someone who um, feels not good enough about the way they look right now. What do you say to them? Start small. Literally like, so obviously stop comparing yourself to other people. We can work on that, but start small, like take, do the things that you know you can do today. Like when you set your goals, set goals that, you know, you can do, like it's a little bit hard, but you still can do it. So instead of like, I'm going to lose 30 pounds, you can start with, you know, I'm going to cut Oreo. So instead of eating the whole pack, maybe I'm just eating three pieces. Mm-hmm. Those are the things that you obviously can do and you start small and then you can see the benefits of it kicking in. You can see like just the positive feedback, you know, cause when you cut off like less sugar, your skin's gonna look a little better and you're like, oh wow, I want one more of that. I want more of this. Mm-hmm. And you can naturally just do the right thing and you, you can relearn the lot, right things. But if you start too big and start just like cutting cold turkey, everything, you're not going to be able to accomplish anything because like after that initial motivation, you're just going to lose it. And so when you start small, you can build that discipline of yourself of keep moving forward. All right. So Fung, tell us where we can learn more about you, uh, the work you're doing, where we can get inspired and uh, anything else you want to tell us about. So yeah, I have a website. It's called uh, beactiveiseasy.com that you can go on, read my blog. I, I post it bi-weekly about, you know, like I go in depth uh, into the topics. But um, also I have a free checklist. So if you want like the habit forming checklist, that's something that I made that you can do, like start small and then keep going. You can, it's, it's also on my website. But if you just want fun things, you know, um, reels and stuff then go on my instagram at be active is easy as well where you know i post fun things about me memes and then my cat how we work out together how (laughs) she's mad at me for like she kicks me on the floor or whatever um you can yeah you can go and find out more about that on instagram and um you know that's all my channels really awesome well, thank you so much. This is a lot of fun. We really appreciate you coming on and talking with us. Thank and you listening to my crazy, me. crazy food habits. Thank you. <laughs> no, it's, it's fine. It's not crazy. That's how you think about it. See, you're afraid of people judging now. Uh, yeah, <laughs> I am, right? right. That's right. She she's, needs to put some filters on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, don't even get me started about my short teeth. Listen, this thing right here, I got to tell you, not loving it. And as I'm getting older, it's just getting lower. <laughs> 
<laughs> Thanks again, but we really appreciate it. All right. Thank you. Yeah, it's a pleasure meeting you.